Hello, David. A- am I on? Hey, Dave, you're on. Okay. <laughs> Is it you, well, thanks, Dave? Thanks for having me very much, uh, Alexandros. And it's a and invited me. It's an honor to be here, and I'd like to speak briefly for a few minutes today because we're in the midst of an astronomical revolution. Uh, just as Hypatia uh, pushed knowledge forward 1600 years ago, we're now really in the full blossom of another revolution in astronomy and understanding the cosmos around us. And so it's a very special time that we all can share because in the last 30 years or so, astronomers, cosmologists, planetary scientists, uh, and astrophysicists, they've learned more in the last generation, in the last 30 years, than we really had in about the past 300 years about the universe and how it works. So it's a very special time for all of us to be aware of this and to share it with each other. To provide a few examples of what we've learned recently here, we now know the details to a first approximation of how the sun will die about five billion years from now or so when it swells up and becomes a red giant and eventually our, we'll have a white dwarf core, a very hot core left of our star that will be in the center of a planetary nebula, a glowing cloud of gas. Uh, and that will be our solar system's cocoon uh, five, six, and seven billion years from now. We now know the fate of life on Earth, and we know that life originated at least 3.4 and maybe more billion years ago as a very simple life, of course, on Earth. Uh, but we know that less than a billion years or so from now, the sun, which is a slowly varying star, will produce enough radiation that it will boil the oceans off of our planet, and that will be it for us. So we now, we actually have about 80% of the story of life on Earth has already been written for us, and, and that will be, that, that will be uh, the end of our life on our planet um, at that point. Uh, we know how the moon formed. At least there's pretty good consensus that in the last generation, because of the incredible similarity between the Apollo moon rocks and Earth rocks in some very specific ways, that a planetesimal struck Earth uh, long ago, about 4.55 billion years ago, and, and threw up a ring of material around our planet that accreted into the moon. That's a, a very exciting result as well. We also know what's happening happened to the water on Mars. Mars used to be a very wet planet and it no longer is and we also know about the interesting details of what happened to Venus. Venus about three quarters of a billion years ago globally resurfaced. It really had a huge volcanic eruption that that uh, reformed the surface of that planet and that's very interesting for planetary scientists of course to study. We also are at a, around at a very magical year here in studying the planet or dwarf planet, which is a kind of planet, Pluto, uh, because we have the New Horizons spacecraft, of course, this July passing in a flyby past Pluto and its big moon Charon and its other small moons. So we'll get the first close-up look at um, the last frontier in some ways of the solar system that, that uh, we have not really understood or seen close up yet. We also have an explosion of exoplanets that astronomers are discovering around uh, stars near us in the galaxy and so it's become very clear in the last uh, 20 years or so uh, that planets are extremely common in in the uh, galaxy, in our Milky Way galaxy, and uh, there are probably lots of planets like Earth out there. We don't quite have the ability to detect exact Earth analogs yet, but that's coming probably very soon. So that's exciting as well. We also understand that our Milky Way galaxy uh, is a barred spiral, and we understand its structure now, which uh, we only uh, derive really in detail in the year 2008. 
Also, in that year, we uh, understood for the first time that about four billion years or so, the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy will collide, this big sister spiral of ours in the local group of galaxies. It's coming toward us a few hundred kilometers per second. Eventually, these two galaxies will collide and produce a new galaxy um, called Milkamada. Uh, we also know a lot, of course, about the size of the universe, about the mysterious nature. We're beginning to find out about dark matter and uh, what most of the unit, the majority of the mass energy in the universe is made of, dark energy, this repulsive force that is accelerating the expansion of the universe. We really don't understand what it is yet, but that's an explosive discovery. And I think we, it's fair to say uh, that we are beginning to really understand uh, uh, the uh, commonality, the, 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 the likelihood, the probability that there's a lot of life out there in the universe. So it's a very exciting time in all sorts of ways for astronomers, for science enthusiasts, for us all to uh, be around and to understand all of this. Uh, and I thank you for having me here for, for a short time to talk to you. Um, and I don't know if there are any questions about astronomy, about, about some of these things that I've mentioned that we can entertain, or whether the connection will not allow that. Erotisis? Questions? Oh dear, and now I don't hear anything uh, on your end. Ah, okay, no. Okay. We, had it, we had it in mute. Here is your hand, your applaud. Your applause. Thank you, David. That, that was a, a stroke of astronomical news. Yeah, there's a lot going on, more so than there ever has been astronomically and with planetary science and with cosmology, the, the study of, of the origin of the universe and its fate. And so it's a very, very exciting time for us to follow up on all these details because it's changing rapidly and we're getting maybe uh, within a few years of some earth shattering uh, ideas um, like perhaps detecting the first life elsewhere in the universe outside of our planet which will be a momentous occasion of course if that comes. Question. Erotisi. That was all Greek to you, right? Okay, David, this is Dennis Simopoulos. Uh, the question, can you hear me? I'm having a very great difficult time, I'm afraid, hearing the audio, clearly. Okay, oh. let me try again. The question is uh, from uh, a lady in the audience about Vera Rubin, about uh, the uh, uh, dark uh, mat matter and uh, how she discovered it uh, uh, a few decades ago. I'm afraid that I still, there's a lot of distortion and I'm afraid I still didn't quite get that. Okay, the question is, can you comment about Vera Rubin and her discovery of uh, dark matter or the Ooh. existence Vi of dark Vi matter? Vera Rubin, yes. Uh, dark, dark matter um, was first uh, thought about by a number of astronomers in the 1930s, among them Fritz Zwicky, who was an irascible character in, in a lot of different ways. But then somewhat later, the, the first uh, astronomers to really study and notice the fact that the outer material in spiral galaxies 
was orbiting much more quickly than it should be, far away from the centers of galaxies, and Vera Rubin at the Carnegie Institution of Washington was the leader of a lot of those studies in the 1950s and later, and so really proved absolutely the existence of dark matter. We still really don't know. So that, that Vera, Vera Rubin's work was enormously important in uh, justifying and, and uh, making clear that dark matter was a substantial part of the universe. We now know that it's roughly approximately 24% of the universe exists in the, uh, the universe's mass energy exists in the form of dark matter. So that was an enormously important step forward by Vera Rubin and others. And we still don't know what dark matter consists of. It, it was, there was a movement there for a while, for a couple of decades, that maybe it consisted of unseen planets and black holes and large things. That now is out of vogue, that sort of movement. And it seems to be clear that dark matter must exist in the form of some elementary particle, but we don't know which. There isn't a good mate to explain this. In the 1970s, other cosmologists and particle physicists uh, came up with a proposed particle called axions. And it may be that they are responsible for or much of dark matter, although we don't absolutely know um, that they exist. So it's still a very murky, mysterious thing, but Vera Rubin was one of the huge giants in uh, really uh, confirming that dark matter definitively exists and is a major component of the universe. Okay, thank you, and good night. Thanks a lot, David. Great to see you again. Miss Starmus, didn't you? Thank you very much. <laughs> Sure, Take appreciate care. Thanks for having Please me. Stay in touch. Great. Bye. Thank you. Ciao.